Hello! Welcome back to Beauty Bee. So today what we're going to be talking about is why brands want you or us to want to be influencers. Now, my channel focuses on beauty and fashion. So I'm going to be talking about this mostly with respect to beauty brands. However, this really works for fashion, and I imagine it works for a lot of other industries as well that I'm a little less familiar with. I hate disclaimers, but I feel like this needs one. I'm not shaming anyone for wanting to be an influencer or being an influencer. I mean, this is my YouTube channel. If I was getting paid to make this video, that would be fantastic. I'm not. I have all of like 11 subscribers or something. So no brands are interested in me, and really even YouTube AdSense isn't interested. So, but if I could, I'd be right on that. The first big benefit that comes to brands when people want to become beauty influencers is how their buying habits change. Look at really small YouTube channels. We're thinking like under 500, even under 1,000 subscribers. These people aren't making any money off of YouTube. You cannot get monetized if you don't have a thousand subscribers. However, the number of $400, $800, $1,200 biggest Sephora haul ever is just astounding. Most of these people probably wouldn't be spending that kind of money if they didn't have a beauty channel. I mean, I've been 19 years old, I've been 20 years old. I certainly did not have, let's say $300 a month to spend on makeup. I still don't have $300 a month to spend on makeup and I'm significantly older than that. Really, that kind of consumption doesn't stop once you get up to a bigger channel. There's a reason that we have the image of this beauty guru space as this huge area filled with three different sets of Ikea drawers, each one just crammed with makeup. Yeah, a lot of that is PR, but a lot of it also isn't. Because the sad truth of the matter is, to become a beauty YouTuber, one of the quickest and probably easiest paths is just buying things. If you buy that new too Faced or ColourPop palette when it comes out and you can have a review up in two days, then you're going to have a lot of people searching for reviews on that palette and hopefully coming to your channel for the first time. So then the goal becomes to get it fast. Then you can have, maybe you can't have the first review out, but you can have the first, I bought this myself review, was it worth my money? So now you can't have watched any reviews before you buy. So you, I mean, hopefully you're looking at things that you think you'll enjoy just based off product descriptions or promo pictures, but you can't watch a review before you buy it. You're making a fairly uninformed purchasing decision for the sake of clout. And that's a huge boost for the companies. Would they necessarily have spent, sold all of those palettes? No one was interested in getting it quickly. There was no buzz. No, probably not. It's been like two hours, but hopefully I've recreated my setup closely enough that you won't even notice. So another reason that we can see that influence, that brands want us to be like influencers is the brand trips. Now I see these talked about quite a bit in the beauty community and it's often presented as sort of a tit for tat. They're, they give you a trip, you post about it on, you post about the product on social media. And while I think there's definitely an element of that, what they don't really bring up is that the brand trip sells a lifestyle. Tarte, for example, wants you to associate their brand with a fun trip to Aruba or wherever it is they take all those people. 
Um, they want you to see yourself in the girls having fun on the beach with tart. If it was just about trip or post, they wouldn't have asked, they wouldn't want people to blog their weekend. They wouldn't have this hashtag trip with tart or I don't know, Dior in Paris or wherever it is all these trips go. What they're selling is in some levels just an influencer lifestyle. Do you, I want to be a cute girl who does her makeup and jets off to exotic places? Yeah? Of course! That sounds like a great time! Can I capture a little bit of that essence by buying, I don't know, Tarte's new concealer? No. But the advertising is telling me that I can be. And if I really want to get Tarte's attention and maybe be the influencer on that next brand trip. How am I gonna do it? Well, by buying their stuff and tagging them and putting up a bunch of YouTube videos re highly reviewing Tarte's most recent collections. Again, these, this goal of becoming the influencer is helping the brand. And I know I've been picking on Tarte just because I feel like they're the ones that we most commonly associate with the brand trips, but a lot of them do it. I know Benefit does. I've seen some people go with um, Dior, with Caudalie. A bunch of these places do it. Tarte's just the one that really pops to mind. In a very similar vein, we have these um, PR hunts. If you're wondering why I'm looking down, I've got my notes here. This is like when you're professional enough that you write down notes, but you are childish enough that you write them in green glitter gel pen. Um, yeah, I rem do we remember, I think it was ABH's um, PR hunts last year, two years ago? So they were on the lookout for up and coming influencers, makeup artists, Instagrammers, whatever you want to call them. And the goal was to get on their PR list. So get maybe, I don't know, a couple hundred dollars worth of products sent to you a year, maybe. <laughs> Actually don't know just how much um, PR ABH puts out. However, to get their attention, you're going to need to use their hashtag, be posting about them, probably be posting about them using their products. And what are you going to get from that? What, well, you might get a little free makeup, but ABH is going to get exposure. They're going to get people posting about their stuff all the time on social media, and they're going to get people to buy those products so that they can post about them on social media. I'm not going to pretend like the uh, makeup artists don't benefit from this arrangement. They absolutely do. However, your desire to be an influencer is having what is probably even a bigger impact on ABH. It's not wrong for wanting that. I think that's perfectly reasonable. And if you're a big fan of the brand, Go for it, try to get on the, that PR list. But let's keep in mind that the company is out to help itself, not to help you or reward raw talent or anything like that. So what happens when people make it? I mean, if the brand wants you to want to be an influencer, what happens when it works out for you? Well, they still win. How much do you think, you know, Tati or James Charles or Emily Noel spend at Sephora and Ulta every year? I'm gonna bet that they're rouged at us many times over, even though they're receiving a bunch of PR. Influencers are also a marketer's biggest dream. I mean, they're 
do you give that human touch of putting a face to a product? They can reach hundreds of thousands, even millions of people. And they're cheaper than celebs. I know that there was quite a bit of talk again last year or two years ago. Time's been doing funny things these last couple months about some beauty guru who was charging $80,000 to feature products in their videos. Well, Jennifer Aniston's deal with Aveeno, it was rumored to be in the eight figure range. Yeah, that's a little bit more than promoing a product, but eight figures, that's insane. Influencers are great for getting the word out there about your product. I mean, they have incredibly huge audiences, but they also have a little bit of relatability. I mean, even the biggest YouTubers are still sitting in their house and talking about makeup. And at least on some level, we kind of still think of them as being those, I don't know, 17 year old makeup artists that we saw when they had 46 subscribers and terrible lighting. Influencers also have this added bonus of see, being kind of like experts. I mean, I see a lot of talk on YouTube about, oh, this one's not a makeup artist. This one's not a makeup artist. Here's a real makeup artist. Influencer A may not actually be a makeup artist. We see those Alex drawers that are full of makeup. We hear them tell us about how many dozens or hundreds of mascara formulas they've tried over the years, and they're wearing evidence of their makeup abilities or potentially lack thereof on their face. Jennifer Aniston and Jennifer Garner aren't dermatologists. They're still spokespeople for, actually don't know, Aveeno and Neutrogena? Maybe I should be paying more or less attention to advertising, I'm not really sure. So I hope that this video doesn't come across as an attack on anyone. I mean, I understand why wanting a YouTube channel is fun. I understand why it can be rewarding, both creatively and potentially financially. And I understand that there is a bit of glamour to that very top tier. I also hope that we can keep in mind how other entities are benefiting from this desire for validation and approval, though. So that's all I've got to say. If you found this video helpful or interesting, I hope you will like and subscribe. I would love to continue this conversation down in the comments if you have any thoughts to add. Thanks so much for watching and until next time. See ya!